new videos every day. In an earlier video, we were discussing the importance of doing music with your baby. The human voice, singing, talking to your child, both parents, grandparents, everybody. Today, it's very popular to let a TV talk to your child and developing child or a CD or an audio recording actually speak more to your child than you do. Many people think, oh, I don't have a nice enough voice to sing. That is absolutely counter intuitive towards what your intentions are towards your baby. Your intentions are always to help them develop and to develop speech and vocabulary and words and be able to read and socialize and get along with better with other children and human beings better. And the only really effective way to do that is not through computers, not through the TV, not through a CD. Actually, you spending time singing together. Even if you can't carry a tune in a bucket, my father was tone deaf and I sang with my dad. And it's important that every parent and child speak and talk interactively with each other. Taking your child and do an imitative play where you sing patty cake or they make a sound, you imitate that sound. Let them imitate, they're gonna imitate your face. Spending more time singing or if there is a recording, um, there's a brilliant doctor, Dr. Fred Schwartz in Atlanta, Georgia. He's an anesthesiologist and he's one of the leaders in music medicine that has actually been using music in anesthesia with um, premature infants. And what he's been able to do is reduce the amount of morphine 50% across the board pretty much when he uses music. And what he's done is he's gone in and he's made recordings of womb sounds of the mother. So he has actual recordings of womb sound and then he is a musician himself along with other musicians. And then they masked and made recordings of music. It's called Transition Series. You can find it on Amazon.com. And he has a whole series of CDs related to children. If you're wanting to use CDs, use them very intentionally and focus, not as background, but something that you actually sit and you hold your child and you look in their eyes and you imitate each other too. Or you rock and you move or you hum along to it. There's a CD here we use a lot called Dream a Little, D, Dream, a Little Dream by Dr. Schwartz. And it's one that we use a lot with sleep induction, with relaxing with children who are having anxiety or just helping parents move and relax and bond if there's um, been some sort of medical issues either with the parent or the child. Those are all things that we have parents actively use recorded music but they're doing things with the recorded music with their child, both parent and um, child. CDs and uh, TV programs, you do need to know their main purpose, even though there can be a helpful thing, their main thing is to sell CDs and to sell the TV program. We're being, um, as human beings, it's become a commodity music. A hundred years ago, there was no electricity, or I don't know, within the last couple hundred years, there was no electricity. All this development, this phenomena I've talked about with human beings and music, this neurologic phenomena, that nothing else in the human experience can touch as what music affects the human being, activating all areas of the brain, was developed over all of humanity's history that we made the music. We sang it if it was gonna be sung, we danced to it, we made it, we were all percussionists. It's just a part of making music and to turn on a recording can be helpful and it can be part of your background and kind of soundtrack your life, but it must be used more intentionally with a child if you really want those intentional effects to help with intellectual development, to help with social development, cognitive. Remember, the Mozart effect, even though you're gonna see that on CDs and you're gonna see it as bestsellers in books, that research was never replicated. It was one study that if you listen to Mozart and the intellectual scores, they went up. Tons of people have tried to replicate it. It is just a cultural myth. It's a pop culture myth. So um, please remember, Another big mistake that over years of working with parents and with children, a big mistake I've seen folks do is about sleep induction in babies. A lot of people have been using recorded music and leaving it all on night with their baby to help increase intelligence. That actually negatively infects 
the baby. It actually keeps them from REM sleep. They don't get good restorative sleep and it's not good development of sleep patterns. If you're wanting good sleep patterns with the baby, the best thing is to do all your scheduled routine rituals that the baby goes to sleep at the same time, they've been fed, they're changed, you put them down in a dark room, quiet room, and they go to sleep. Music can help in the process of as you're holding them and getting them ready for bed, but even music left on while the baby's alone is not a really good idea for more than 20, 30 minutes. Again, you're gonna keep the baby awake once they've gone to sleep, and you want that baby, once they're asleep, to not be brought back into the brain to be brought back to a higher level of activity. You want that brain to be allowed to go into sleep and drop down into REM sleep. So any kind of noise um, in the room that would do that is actually detrimental to your baby's sleep. So again, recorded music is a commodity and we all love it and it can be the soundtrack of our life, but the best thing for a developing child is live music making or TV programs that you watch together computer games that you do together. But the most important thing is if you're gonna sing along to a CD, sing along to it, play together, dance together, because you're the most important factor in that child's development, using the music to support that. Thank you so much for watching these videos. I hope that they're interesting to you. If you like them, please leave lots of comments and questions. Um, Share it with other people. If you like Psyche Truth's channel, let them know. Share it with others and please subscribe to the channel. You can always find more information on my website, centerformusictherapy.com, and we have links to other uh, helpful sites there.